Hello students, good day, and welcome to our discussion on nature and process of communication. Are you ready? Let's start. First and foremost, I want to know what comes to your mind when you hear the word communication. If you have a paper and pen beside you, I want you to write your answers there in 10 seconds. Write as many as you can. Time's up. Now let's see if those words are connected to our discussion for today. It says here that communication is a two-way process of connecting to both living and non-living things. It is also a means of sharing and exchanging messages, information, ideas, and feelings for mutual understanding. Communication connects people and the world they live in. It is through communication that people are able to express their thoughts and ideas or convey information and messages through word of mouth, gestures and signals, signs and others. People have always communicated with one another in various forms. What are the types of communication? First, we have verbal. Verbal communication uses spoken language to communicate a message or information. It involves production of sounds, words, phrases, and sentences through speech. Next is nonverbal. Nonverbal communication refers to the conscious or subconscious transmission and reception of messages of information using the body. It includes body gestures, facial expressions, posture, and tone. Now, let's differentiate verbal communication to nonverbal communication. In the use of words, verbal communication uses oral or written words while nonverbal communication does not use any oral or written words. Verbal communication uses two types. It can be oral and written. While nonverbal communication may be in various types, it can be in visual, audio, audiovisual, silent, and etc. Verbal communication is easy to understand, while nonverbal communication is difficult to understand because it is more of actions and gestures. In terms of structure, verbal communications is highly structured because it is made of words, while nonverbal communication lacks informal structure. In terms of distortion of information, there is a less possibility of distortion of information in verbal communication, while in nonverbal, there is a high possibility of distortion of information because it can come in various ways. In terms of continuity, Verbal communication begins and ends with words, while nonverbal communication continues until the purpose is achieved. And for feedback, verbal communication gives less and delayed feedback, while nonverbal communication gives a lot of feedback. Now, what are the elements of communication? These are the things that you need in order for communication to be established. We have sender, receiver, the message, channel, feedback, and noise. Basically, sender is the person who creates the message. The message is the one that is being created by the sender. Receiver is the person who receives the message. Channel is the material or medium used in sending the message. It can be a cell phone, a television, newspaper, etc. Feedback is the message being given by the receiver. And noise is a barrier that can be present in communication. Here is the process of communication. Everything starts with the sender. Down to the encoding of message, then the message. Followed by the channel, wherein the sender is about to choose what kind of medium is he or she's going to use in sending the message down to the receiver and then once the receiver received the message he or she's going to decode the message to produce feedback if you can see the noise is present between the message the channel and the receiver 
noise can be a possible barrier. So, you have to know how to handle these kinds of noises or barriers in order for you to establish good communication. Now it's time for our pop quiz. True or false? Write the word true if the statement is true, otherwise write the word false. For number one, communication is a one-sided process of connecting to both living and non-living things. Is it true or false? Number two, sender is the one who receives the message. Is it true or false? Number three, feedback is usually given by the receiver. Is it true or false? For number four, verbal communication uses body gestures, facial expression, posture, and tone when communicating. Is it true or false? And lastly, number five, channel refers to the medium used in communicating. Is it true? or false. You may pause this video to answer this pop quiz. Now it's time for us to know if you got the correct answers. For number one, it's false. Number two, false. Number three, false. Number four, false. And number five, true. Now, let's have a quick discussion on communication models. The first that we have is linear communication. The best example of this is the Shannon Weaver model of communication. This model of communication is one way focusing on the transmission of a message to a receiver who never responds or has no way of responding to the information conveyed. Truly, this model of communication is one-sided for it does not require any feedback at all. Next is we have the interactive. The best example of this is the Scram model of communication. Now, interactive approach is very different from linear approach. Interactive approach is a two-way communication process where a response is given after a message is sent. The recipient of the action intentionally or unintentionally gives a feedback associated with the information received. The last model of communication that we have is the transactional model. The transactional model of communication shows a circular process of interaction between the persons involved in the communication, with each one actively participating and sharing ideas with one another. They are the communicators actively exchanging information and reaction. But one thing is very different from this kind of, or from this model of communication. The noise is present everywhere. And again, noise can be considered as a barrier of communication. Now, let's have another pop quiz. Write the word true if the statement is true, otherwise false. Number one, interactive approach is usually one-sided model of communication. Number two, in transactional model, noise is always present in the flow of communication. And number three, Shannon Weaver is an example of linear model of communication. You may pause this video to answer the quiz. Now let's check if you got the correct answer. For number one, false. For number two, True. For number three, true. Before, before we end our discussion, let's have a quick recap. Do you have any questions? Don't hesitate to ask your subject teacher. With that, thank you so much for listening. God bless you and always stay safe.